Hey guys, it's me Kai and welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I thought it would be a fun idea to show you guys how I made my entrance outfit for the premiere episode of Canada's Drag Race. That outfit was inspired by Diana Ross. It looks to me like a Bob Mackie and I thought that this was so sick. I wanted to have it right away and so I decided to make it into a jumpsuit. It looks like a really simple design if you don't know too much about sewing. Um, I obviously am not an expert. I mean, you guys saw how that episode turned out for me, <laughs> but um, it took me a long time to like parse out how to actually put this together because I didn't know how to add these like stripes to the outfit without making it look really lumpy because if I was gonna sew it right sides together, which is my first um, instinct, you would have seen all the lumps and bumps. Um, but then also there was no center front seam to the design. So I was like, how is this gonna work? Before we get into the tutorial, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is kind being in the bottom three for a sewing challenge on Drag Race. When I tell you I was shook, <laughs> My face was cracked like the pattern on this outfit, honey. I felt a lot of emotions that day. I cried so much. Somebody had to come to my room and shake some sense into me because I was hysterical. Um, but so much time has passed since then that I've really just come to terms with the fact that I am maybe a little bit delusional, but that's what you guys subscribe to, okay? Just follow these tutorials at your own discretion. <laughs> Let's talk about the topic at hand, which is this cat suit. So if you guys want to see how I made it, then just keep watching. Hi guys. Okay, so I'm starting this video with a pattern for a cat suit already at hand because it takes a lot of time and tailoring to make one that fits you really well. So I advise you to try out a commercial pattern or trace out garments that fit you. Um, but the key difference in my pattern is that it's meant to be cut out on a fold. Okay, so I'm starting out with fabric number one and I'm tracing the pattern on a fold. The outfit is two fabrics. The one I wore on the show was black sequins and a sparkly white neoprene. I ended up using the neoprene as the main foundation of that one. In this case, I'm using this black spandex as my foundation, meaning the base of the whole garment is one big black spandex catsuit. And I'm gonna be top stitching a layer of the second fabric on top of half of the catsuit. Do this twice to your foundation fabric and you'll have yourself a front and back, both one piece. Take one of them and cut it down the middle because we're gonna be adding a zipper to it and that's gonna be the back piece. Now for the sleeves. I just traced out um, actually this sleeve of my entrance outfit, but again, it's just a basic sleeve. Try to use a pattern of your own. Now let's cut out the pattern pieces for the silver half of the catsuit. I'm cutting out the main body pattern, but just one half of it because this is for the back, which only one half of it will be silver. And I'm also just cutting out one sleeve. So the catsuit is gonna look half black, half silver, but in truth, it's mostly black on the inside, as I said, and the silver is just covering up half. The reason why is because for the original catsuit, the white neoprene was a lot sturdier while the black sequin was just a very thin fabric and it would have ripped easily. And most importantly, the top stitching of the one fabric on top of the other is how I achieve that zebra stripe effect. If I was just doing a straight line down the middle, then maybe I could have truly made it half and half. But if I'm gonna layer them one over the other for the zebra stripe effect, then I might as well layer one over the other over the entire bodysuit so that the whole garment really feels like it's made of one same thing. So this is gonna be my method of doing the zebra stripes. Okay, so I taped my half pattern to more paper and traced out the rough shape of what the other half would look like. And I freehand drew some stripes as if they were like flames and this is where you get creative with the shape, the sizes, the number of zigzags, and just keep erasing it until you like it. And when you finally settle on a design you like, cut it out. And now this is the pattern piece that we're gonna use to cut out the accent fabric, the sequins. And my other tip for cutting out sequin when it comes to such detailed lines like this, because it's kind of notoriously hard to cut sequins, is to tape the pattern down to the fabric with clear tape. It seriously makes cutting into the sequin so easy and so precise. I don't know if this is how you guys already do it, but I was so proud of myself for thinking this up. Like I literally have the mind of a mastermind, honey. As a big warning when cutting this out, be very mindful of what side of your body you want um, the accent fabric to be on because at this point, if you had already cut out the back half of the sequin fabric, if that's on your back right, then the front part with all the stripes needs to be cut out as a front right my right, your left. So don't confuse it, or it's just a waste of fabric to start over. I'm pinning the sky to the front piece of my foundation fabric, and now you can start to see it come together. I'm also gonna pin the corresponding back pieces together, not right sides facing together, but the wrong side of the sequins on top of the right side of the spandex. And now you have an idea of what the back of the garment is looking like. 
I laid them on top of each other, this time right sides facing, and cut in a triangle for the neckline because I just felt like that would give the eye something to look at from behind. And then you're gonna do the same with one of the sleeves. Personally, I make my sleeves symmetrical so I don't have a left sleeve and a right sleeve. Um, that's just because I'm quite lazy to be completely honest with you. So that ends part one of the tutorial, which is the cutting of the pattern pieces. So now it's time to top stitch the accent fabric onto the base fabric. The idea is to sew them together to make one single pattern piece where the top is the accent fabric or the sequins, but on the wrong side is the wrong side of the black spandex. Does that make sense? Fuse them to just be one sleeve piece so that we can assemble this like a basic catsuit. Okay, so I use a wide zigzag stitch really close to the edges. If you're going to sew the final catsuit together on, say, a 5 8 seam allowance, you want to keep this zigzag stitch, the top stitch, just within that seam allowance so it doesn't show, and just go all the way around every edge. Let me answer this question of how do you decide what fabric to put on top as the accent and what to use as the base fabric. I would offer the general suggestion of use the thicker one underneath because it's more of a sturdy base and you're less likely to have rips and tears. So think like a neoprene or a spandex. Sequin is also really itchy, so that was another reason to put something underneath it. Note that if your top fabric is a little bit sheer, the color of the base fabric might show through, like for example if it was yellow or white. And also if the two fabrics have different stretch levels, when you combine them and sew one on top of the other, that finished piece will have the same stretch as whichever was the less stretchy fabric. So for instance, this black spandex is four-way stretch and the sequins is two-way, but the pattern piece where I sew the sequin on top of the spandex to make one piece, that's only gonna have two-way stretch. Okay, so keep all of that in mind as you're shopping and selecting fabrics for this kind of project. With the back piece and the sleeves, the silver sequins cover the entire pattern piece, but with the front, the silver sequins is in stripes and exposing the black underneath, right? That's the whole point. So you have to go really slow here with your sewing machine. The great thing about sequins is that they hide the thread, like, amazingly. The thread is totally invisible, so keep the top stitch on all the sequins if you are using sequins. Don't use a zigzag stitch where half is on one side, half is on the other. Just keep it all on the sequins. When I reach a corner that comes to a really sharp point, I actually switch to a straight stitch just to get that sharp point in and just go all the way around being really careful. Of course, you still want to do a zigzag stitch along all the raw edges as well. And when you're done, it should look like this from the inside. Now we're all done with part two and we can go ahead and assemble the catsuit in the final part. Start with placing the zipper in the back, so line up how you want the zipper to be, all right sides facing up, and start by flipping the left half of the zipper over the left panel of the back, lining the edge of the zipper fabric to the edge of the pattern piece. Pin these together and sew with the zipper foot and go all the way down to around your hip area or however far down you feel you need the zipper to go in order to fit into this, and then do the same on the other side and close up the bottom, bringing the two back panels together so they become one single back piece. and then I top stitch right beside the zipper to keep that fabric sitting very flat and neat. And when I get to sew over the bottom of the zipper, I go really, really slow. I turn the hand wheel manually so I don't sew into the metal teeth. Now we can attach the front and back piece together. So pin and sew along the shoulder seam and all the way down the sides from the armpit down to the ankle and up the inner leg up to the crotch. But leave about 10 inches of space at the crotch and I'll explain exactly why that is. On every single pant pattern you'll find, there's always this horn at the crotch. That's to account for the flexibility of moving your legs and walking. And that's why pants are never cut on a fold where you can get the left and right leg all in one cut of fabric. That's because our bodies are three-dimensional and we have round hips and round butts. But the problem I faced is that I didn't want any seams to be visible on the front, so my catsuit pattern had to be done on a fold, so the crotch area didn't have that extra room and flexibility, which you see in this hole that I left with that 10 inches at the crotch. If I sewed this all the way and closed up this hole, it would just rip and not fit. So the way that I figured to get around this is to add a gusset, which is an extra piece of fabric to fit into this little diamond-shaped hole that will give me the three-dimensionality and the flexibility in my pants. So this is all a little bit hand-wavy and not really exact, but I measured out a diamond about 10 inches by 6 inches on the diagonals and cut it out of a black base fabric, rounding off the edges so it's not straight lines. And I cut out half the diamond out of the silver sequins since, of course, I'm doing half black and half silver. So top stitch the silver onto the black, and now you have your gusset. Fit this into the hole in the crotch and pin it all right sides together. It's gonna be awkward, but 
Sew all around that and you'll have successfully filled your hole. Cheers! Next step is the sleeves. Just sew them together shut along the straight line to make the sleeve and pin it inside the sleeve hole right sides together, lining up the sleeve seam with the armpit seam. So here's what we're dealing with now and you can see that the problem of the crotch area has been resolved and very flexible now. So now that it fits properly, we can hem the raw edges of the sleeves and the leg holes by folding inwards and sewing with a zigzag stitch. Next, we're going to add a snap closure collar to the neck. So I measured around my neck and added about 2 inches for the snap closure. And I made a rectangle with that length and a width of 5 inches. Add more if you want it to be a taller collar. Ignore all the other lines you see here by the way. I don't know what was going on inside my head here. You have to make the rectangle extra wide because we're going to be folding it over and sewing down the length one side. Cut away the extra seam allowance and flip it inside out and top stitch the other end shut. I went off camera and ironed this flat so it looked a little bit cleaner but afterwards you're going to pin the middle of the collar to the middle of the front neckline, right sides together so upside down, and then sew all along the front half of the tatsu, so shoulder to shoulder. So past the shoulder seams, the collar will just hang free. And then you can top stitch the seam allowance down so it doesn't look lumpy here. And then sew the snap closures to the ends of the collar with a needle and thread. After that's done, we're going to have to hem the raw edges of the back, but only from the zipper to the shoulder where the collar is. The final step in all of this is adding some shoulder pads, which are completely optional. I do have a dedicated video teaching all about that for you guys to check out if you're interested, but that's the finished garment. And we're back! So this is what the cat suit is looking like. Can I tell you guys, when I knew that I was going to remake this for a YouTube tutorial, the colors that I wanted to do was going to be purple and yellow so I could be like Toxtricity the Pokemon, but I could not find like the proper fabric so I just settled on this, but I would love to see one of you guys do that idea. I also want to announce that I finally have merch available for sale with Drag Queen merch, so I'll put all the links in the description. I've got a little math pun t-shirt if you are interested in those, it means I love kind. And also very brand new, I also have merch out for my entrance look, so if you guys want to wear the zebra stripes and you don't want to follow the tutorial, you can wear it on a t-shirt. So I'll put all the links in the description for that, so I want to thank you guys in advance for the support and for all the love. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for sticking by me, even though I'm kind of a hot mess. I'll be back soon with another video on my channel, but until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you're all doing well. Bye!